Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Warning, this video contains some mature language. June 14, 2015, in Springfield, Missouri. A Facebook post on the joint account for Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose Blanchard read, That bitch is dead. Neighbors rushed to the house, but the sheriff's department was unable to enter the residence without a search warrant. They did allow a neighbor to climb in a window. He couldn't find either of the women and was concerned that all three of Gypsy Rose's wheelchairs were still in the house. Once the search warrant was obtained, police entered the home and found Dee Dee stabbed to death on her bed, but Gypsy Rose was nowhere to be found. Gypsy Rose was born July 1, 1991. Despite being premature, she seemed healthy. At three months old, Dee Dee began to tell others that Gypsy Rose was suffering from sleep apnea. By the age of seven, Gypsy Rose was confined to a wheelchair. She was removed from school due to her illnesses, which included leukemia, muscular dystrophy, and brain damage caused by her premature birth, amongst other issues. Dee Dee's parents became critical of the way she treated Gypsy Rose, so the two left Springfield and moved to Slidell, Louisiana. Gypsy Rose was a regular visitor to the many hospitals and clinics in the area. Dee Dee now complained that Gypsy Rose was having seizures. She was taking multiple medications each day and underwent several surgeries, including the insertion of a feeding tube while living in Louisiana. In August 2005, the apartment the two women were living in, Gypsy Rose was now 14 years old, was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose were flown to Missouri free of charge to be closer to family. In 2008, Habitat for Humanity learned the story of a young girl unable to walk and her mother displaced by Katrina. They offered to build a home for the two. Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose received an outpouring of help from people across the country that included airfare to visit specialists, trips to Disney World, and tickets with backstage passes to Miranda Lambert concerts. The singer even donated $6,000 to help Gypsy Rose with living and medical expenses. Gypsy Rose was growing up and would soon be an adult, which meant that many of the charities offering money and services for children would no longer help Dee Dee survive. Claiming that all of their documents had been destroyed in the hurricane, Dee Dee obtained a birth certificate for Gypsy Rose stating that she'd been born in 1995, buying her four additional years. With her oversized glasses, bald head, and tiny frame, Gypsy Rose passed for much younger than her actual age. What the world didn't know was that Gypsy Rose, with exception of a lazy eye, was perfectly healthy. She could walk, but didn't because her mother told her that she couldn't. As she got older, she would walk around her bedroom late at night when her mother was already asleep so that she wouldn't know. Dee Dee told Gypsy Rose that she had cancer and that chemotherapy would cause her hair to fall out, so they should just go ahead and shave her head. Gypsy Rose believed her. A combination of medication and lack of care caused all of Gypsy Rose's teeth to fall out, and her mother applied numbing creams to her gums that caused her to drool. She convinced doctors that Gypsy Rose needed her salivary glands removed. When anyone spoke to Gypsy Rose, her mother held her hand. She later reported that when she said something her mother didn't like, Dee Dee would squeeze Gypsy Rose's hand to get her to be quiet. In 2012, Gypsy Rose created an account on the website ChristianDatingForFree.com. There she met a man named Nicholas Godijan from Big Bend, Wisconsin. He was 24 years old. She was 21, but everyone believed her to be 17. The two planned for Nicholas to travel to Springfield on June 12, 2015. Gypsy Rose and her mother spent most of the day traveling to and from a doctor's appointment. When they settled in for the night, Gypsy Rose told Nicholas to come over. When he arrived, she gave him a pair of latex gloves and a knife. Nicholas surprised Dee Dee in her bedroom when she called out to Gypsy Rose asking who this man was. He stabbed her multiple times while she was still in her bed, crying out for Gypsy Rose to come help her. Nicholas and Gypsy Rose boarded a bus the next day and headed for Big Bend. 
Once at the home of Nicholas's parents, Gypsy Rose began to worry that her mother might not be found for days. She told Nicholas to post on the Facebook account she and her mother shared. He posted, that bitch is dead. Police traced the IP address of the Facebook posts and confirmed that they came from Nicholas. On June 15, 2015, the police raided the home where Nicholas and Gypsy Rose were staying. They were both arrested and taken into custody for the murder of Dee Dee Blanchard. It was a shock to everyone that knew the women. Footage of Gypsy Rose's arrest was the first time anyone had seen her out of her wheelchair. She was extradited back to Springfield and held on a $1 million bond for first-degree murder. Gypsy Rose was offered and accepted a plea bargain for second-degree murder and sentenced to 10 years in prison. The trial for Nicholas is set to begin in November 2018. Gypsy Rose said in her interview that she misses her mother, but that she feels more free in prison than she ever did living with Dee Dee. Quote, before, with my mom, it's like, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't have friends, I couldn't go outside, you know? Now I'm allowed to just live like a normal woman. Visit www.icantbelieveitsnonfiction.com and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.